Another newly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill in Celebration Point. Okay, and welcome into another duly noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Happy to be here. We'll have Coach Spurrier on a little bit later and Robbie Andrew as well. Um, I will tell you this. Uh, well, I, you know, Coach Spurrier was telling us a story before we did the show today, and it was the funniest story ever. We And we're going to save it for next week. It, it is the best story I've ever heard. I didn't even know about it. Um, He's got some good stories, as you know. Uh, and, of course, on tomorrow we're doing a very special show. We're still trying to set all the logistics up of it. But Matt McCall, Mark Wise are going to join us. Uh, Mark Wise, it's interesting because Mark Wise is doing uh, the LSU um, NIT game. So he'll be in Baton Rouge. Uh, but he's he's going to come on the Zoom with us. Matt McCall has been doing all these requests. He's actually there's a couple of people interested in him in jobs. There's been a rumor out there, and he he told me it wasn't. Well, the rumor is that Chris Mack is going to be the new coach at Vanderbilt. Somebody put it on Twitter, um, and he may be. And they say Matt McCall is going to join him up there. And Matt McCall said I haven't spoken to him in four weeks, so I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, well, I I, I it, look, I'm just going to. Throw questions out there and get out of the way with these guys because they know way more about basketball than I do. Uh, but let's get to our – oh, I did want to mention the pollen. Thank God for the rain because I've been in dealing with this pollen battle, and, and it's more, more my car than my sinuses. It, it, it My car was yellow today or yesterday, and then thank you, rain, uh, for washing it away. I'm, I'm a big stickler about it. I don't like going to car washes. It's just boring. Oh, no, yeah. And you have to stand in line sometimes to, to get in. I just say, hey, if it rains, it'll be clean. <laughs> That's me. All right, let's get to our process service of Gainesville. Starting five brought to you by, of course, the great Scott Hart at Process Service of Gainesville. Uh, let's start with number one. And um, I just want to talk about the injury to Micah Hanlock in a little bit. It, I've never seen anything quite like it, but I have. And that was Keontae Johnson, where the arena is dead silent. And, and you guys know that I don't, there's certain announcers I don't like, and I just can't listen to them do the Gator game. I can't do it. I, I Tessator, Dykes, I, I go down a long list. But I, I tend to just put it on silent. I was actually had the sound on the golf, to be honest with you. Um, so I had to turn it back on, though. I turn the sound on when it, when I see what's going on, that he's on the floor, and I don't know what's going on. And when I turn it back on, it's dead silence. There's nobody talking, and I go, the, my my sound's messed up. What? And I'm, I'm trying to figure out, what did I do wrong here? And then also I realize, no, there's a reason why nobody's, this has been, this is terrible, what's happened here. Um, I don't know, I, I know he had surgery, I think today, it might have been last night, I, I heard different stories. Uh, lower left leg. Uh, it look there was blood on the floor. That tells me that a bone came out. You know, um, just terribly sad. And uh, did, would it have made a difference? Maybe not. Maybe it would have. Uh, but the the point was more that um, you know you feel for the guy. Uh, you saw, and I maybe many of you saw it. I don't know how many of you saw it. I don't know if they even telecast it. But um, Todd Golden was very emotional, crying after the after uh, in, after the game, and yes, it, he could have made a difference. Would he have made the difference? I don't know. Micah Hanlock is not a guy who scores a lot of points, but he's a defensive guy. He's a he's a uh, enforcer in you know down low. He gets a lot of rebounds. But as the game went on, I started thinking, just get this game over. I don't. I. I am. I. I was so depressed going to bed um, last night, thinking about him. Not about the Gators losing to Auburn. I. I. I'm like everybody. I don't like Bruce Pearl. You know him crying and uh, on the sideline was kind of ridiculous. But whatever. Um, but you know, I. I just was. I wanted to see what was going on with him and where he was going, and that's fine. And I wanted to see where, how it would affect Florida Seed. And I'll get to that in a moment. 
I will say, I, I do, well, I'll get to it right now. I think there's no doubt in my mind Florida dropped a line in the seat. It, well, does it matter? I don't know. I don't know if it matters or not. Look, you got you have to beat somebody good to advance. That We know that. Who knows? Marquette could get knocked off. Um, and, of course, they, it, they got a break in a way. They, Florida was the number one seed at the seven seed. Now, by that, I mean they were the 25th seed. So the 20, first 24 are the first four or first um, six. I'm getting complicated. Everybody's, I, I know everybody's just going, I don't want to listen to this. Look, they had respect for Florida, but not enough. And I think that I think the seeding was ridiculous. I thought the whole uh, – I don't think the committee did a very good job. But you know what the, the beauty of the of the tournament is? On Tuesday, nobody will care anymore. Everybody screams and yells, and I'm one of them. I think I think they did a disservice to a lot of teams, St. John's and everybody. But you had to you have to leave somebody out, and that's the shame of it. So, well, let's let's expand the field, okay? Only expand the field if you're going to add teams that I want to watch. Anyway, I do want to say one more thing about what happened on Sunday. And that was the Riley Kugel mystery just keeps growing. It gets weirder and weirder. This is a guy, don't forget, that was considered to be one of the best players in the country. Well, definitely one of the best players in the SEC. Definitely uh, NBA potential. Last two games, he didn't play a minute. They were down to seven guys. Seven guys that can play. And they, and they didn't put him in the game. That tells you they're fed up with him. And I would be, I hate to say this, I would be surprised if he makes a trip to Indianapolis. Um, They they may say, hey, why don't you stay back? You're good. I don't know. I I, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, Look, it's a guy, uh, they already had a come to Jesus meeting with him once when he was, had a bad attitude and we were talking about his body language. And yet in the game that Denzel Aberdeen went off, he was up there cheering for him, former teammate and everything. He was cheering for him. He was fired up. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get what's going on. Clearly something is happening in practices and around the team where he gets mopey and everything. And that's all I know about it. But I've talked to a few people and that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, let's go ahead and go to number two on the process service of Gainesville starting five. And let's look at the bigger picture of the SEC tournament. It was so much fun to watch these games. It was, I mean, I I had to, <laughs> I hate to say this. At one point I had to take my shirt off because I was sweating so much. I was so hot. It's like, I, I've talked about this before. My office is the hottest room in our house. No matter what the temperature is outside, it's hot. But, I got my blood pressure was up because I was into those games. And of course, the Georgia game was chaotic. And you, you said, well, are they going to put them away? They can't. You beat Mike White three, three games in a row. You beat Alabama again. Seating's terrible. You beat Alabama uh, for the second time. And uh, second time, team that's a four seed. You beat them twice, but they're a four seed. And then you beat Texas AM. Got a little revenge there, another NCAA tournament. And you were down 18 and came back and won. That is what I will remember. I will remember that. I will remember Thomas Hawk, too, having an unbelievable dunk in the the game uh, yesterday. I I will remember this fondly and at the same time sadly, not because they lost, but because of what happened to Ham Logden. But you have to look at this tournament and the big picture of it and how well they did. But to be honest with you, there's a part of me that I'm going with my wife's theory on this. Because my wife said this. She goes, Pat, you were so into that game on Saturday against AM. And when they were they actually went to baseball, so they they were listening to it. You were so you 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 talked about it, you were so fired up, so excited. We'd been better off losing the game. I thought about it. I said, you know, the, they wouldn't have been a lower seed. If they'd lost, if they'd lost by four, say, the hand locked in would still be healthy. Yeah. I may be, but you're not going to play it that way. You always play to win, especially when you're in a tournament setting. So I, while I, could, I will say this, thrilled that they won, Karen's theory may be correct. I hate, 
I hate to say that she's right, but she is right. All right, number three on the process service of Gainesville starting five. Um, we're going to have this special tomorrow, and we're going to get way more into the SEC or the uh, NCAA tournament tomorrow. But just want to throw a few things out there. Florida, of course, is a 4:30 game. They'll play the winner of Boise State and Colorado. Boise State's never been to the tournament, I think, or never won a tournament game. I think they're 0 9. Colorado's never gotten to the Sweet 16. Uh, Colorado lost to FSU this year at home. So I feel pretty good about the first game, even even with the injury situation there. Um, of course, they're going to Indianapolis, and when they when I saw that, I knew there there were there were great sights. But when I, I saw Indianapolis, I go, oh, I love Indianapolis. My my probably favorite weekend of my life was in Indianapolis when we went to the uh, NCAA tournament there, and Florida won, of course. That was the biggest reason. Um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, we also have three teams from the state of Florida in the NCAA tournament. Can you name them, Zach? Florida would be the easy one. Is Florida Gulf Coast in? They're not in. Nope. Oh, man. Is UNF in? They're not in either. Nope. Florida Atlantic, which was in the Final Four last year. And Stetson, my buddy Donnie Jones, I've been texting back and forth with him, got in. They get their reward for that, they get to play UConn in the first game. There you go. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, have fun. <laughs> but I will say this they're a 16 seed. It's better than being in the play game. Because to me, if you play in the playing game, you, f- you feel like you're not even in the tournament. Mm-hmm. So at least they're going somewhere. They're going to have all the hoopla, the press conferences, and everything. And I'm, I'm proud of Donnie for the job he's done. I will say this Florida. 50 to 1 odds to win the whole thing. You want to put any money on that? No. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll bet you a dollar. That... All right. The other thing that made me happy yesterday, and there wasn't much that made me happy. Well, there were some things, but was I told my wife, and she doesn't get it, okay, some of the stuff. But I said, my goal, as the sex- selection show's coming, I said, my goal is Auburn to Spokane. She goes, why do you care about that? I go, their fans aren't going to be able to go to Spokane. You know where Spokane is? It's a long way away. And I know Bruce Pearl's not happy about it either. Their fans were a big dip part of what that win Sunday because it's easier to get there. And Florida fans don't travel for basketball that well. But Auburn to Spokane, and I love Spokane. I've been, I went there one time for a Final Four in volleyball. I had a blast. It's beautiful. Beautiful country. Snowing that day. It was un- unbelievable. Um, but I like that their fans aren't going to be able to go because they're obnoxious, as most fans are, other than Gator fans, of course. Hey, this is a Gator show, right? Um, all right, let's get to number four, which is what happened in baseball this weekend. Florida's got to figure out how to win on Saturdays. They've lost three straight Saturdays, but they've won three straight series. It's kind of weird. You know, uh, against um, so St. Mary's, Miami, and and uh, uh, Texas A&M, and against Texas A&M, of course, Caglione didn't have his best stuff, but he still got the job done. Uh, the first game was kind of a weird, weird game. They gave up the five spot. A uh, second game, just um, that my whole family was there, and everybody was not real happy with the result. But they had a fun time, and that's the thing. I will say this about that ballpark and what, what they were able to do there, what what uh, uh, Scott Strickland was able to do putting that place together. People love to go to games, and it's not just because Florida's good. They love to go to that ballpark, and even when they lose, they come away and they don't say, what a disappointment. I had a good time. Um, anyway, we have to get to our play of the weekend, and that is – and I don't know if you watch this game, and to be honest with you, I was so into the uh, other things that were going on, I missed it. Uh, but the play of the weekend was this. Shell nut. Little Shelly hitting the home run, but it wasn't just a home run. It was a out at third, in between second and third and a home run because he hit it, and it went off that, that kind of tin roof out there. So it's a home run, but the players played it like it wasn't, and they tagged him out. <laughs> And he still called save, and then he signaled the home run. It was just hilarious. It was uh, crazy for for uh, and Shelnut has been a, a he, he was struggling earlier, but I, look, I love having him in the lineup. It's a good team, and I don't know if it's a great team. We'll find out a lot more 
uh, this weekend when they go to Baton Rouge, although LSU's down a little bit. But that is our Campus USA play of the week. And and at, at that very moment, as you see at the very end of that clip, Sully's mad at somebody. He's yelling at somebody. I don't know who he's yelling at. Right here. Who's he yelling at there? Uh, he he is a mad. He gets mad. He gets very well, he angry. Says, what the f are you doing? Yeah. That's what it looks like to me. Well, that's the thing about uh, Karen. Karen was telling me she goes, "Why is Sully always mad?" And I go, "He's not always mad. He's just mad during games." Um, but he gets very happy when they win. So that's our play of the weekend, brought to you by Campus USA, and that was a lot of fun. All right, let's get to number five, which was Scotty Scheffler, who I picked. Did I not pick him on the show last week? You did. I did. Uh, I will say this, though. Um, when um, my my um, brother-in-law, Dick Smith, who's a, a really good golfer, he's way better than me, he, we were watching the, uh, the, the TPC, and he said, Hey, who'd you pick? And I said, and Shoffley was leading. And I said, Shoffley. And I went, oh, I no, I picked Scheffler, didn't I? But Shoffley was leading, so I did. I let it sit there. And then when Shoffley was leading on Sunday, I go, I'll, I'll just let that sit there. But I picked Scheffler. You have, we have video evidence of that. So um, that was to win back-to-back and, and to hold that shot out was amazing. I do want to give credit, too, to the Florida golf team which uh, won again, and they are they were having a great – they had a great fall, and they're having a great spring. I'm not saying they're going to win it again, but hey, they're going to have a shot. Uh, they're a very good team, and um, they've really been good. I need a third TV, though. There, there's no doubt in my mind. You know, my saying is if you don't have two TVs, you have no TVs. I'm starting to feel that way because I couldn't watch the baseball game. The baseball, you could only get on the plus – so you had to have it on one TV. And if you put it on that, it wasn't the good TV. Now you're on the little littler TV watching the basketball. I didn't want to do that. I got to get three TVs. My dad invented the sports room. In fact, I was talking to my friend Brooks Burkhart. Brooks Burkhart um, was talking about when he used to come over and spend the – he spent the night at our house a few times. Really good friends of ours. Of course, Burkhart Distributing, they've retired now, but – He's still doing a lot of work, and he's playing in the Bob Dooley Invitational. I was talking to him about it. He goes, he goes, you know, your dad invented the sports room. I go, yeah, he kind of did because there was a sports room out there that had a cooler, I mean a, a refrigerator full of beer, of course, nothing else, and four TVs. And sometimes one would be dead, but he'd still leave it up. He didn't care. Four TVs. And I that's where my sports room Love for sports rooms came from. Anyway, um, I miss my dad still. I think about him every day. It's why we have a 29th Bob Dooley Invitational coming up. It is full. I'm sorry, guys, but it is full. In fact, it got fuller today. And I want to give a shout-out to our friends. Um, it used to be um, Jigs Liquors, but it's now uh, the Good Poor uh, over there on 34th, right? All the way towards that Publix down there, almost to Williston Road, uh, the Good Poor. They have come up big with some great sponsorship. Uh, that we just were on the phone before we started the show. They're going to sponsor the. They're going to have a hole out there. It's going to be serving stuff, having games. They're sponsoring the uh, raffle where we're going to have the uh, uh, basically a cooler full of liquor, and you raff and you can uh, win it. Um, they're going to do some other stuff. It, they're amazing. Uh, they're amazing, and they're a, a big sponsor. Well, we'll be talking a lot about our sponsors, and, of course, almost everybody, I think I think everybody, actually, on our sponsor list here is a sponsor also, the Bob Dooley. These are all friends. These are all good people, and uh, I appreciate them. I appreciate everybody. I appreciate all of you. you. All of you, even the ones who criticize me, I appreciate you. I have a guy who's been proofreading my stuff now on uh, Gators Wire, and he's found a bunch of mistakes. I appreciate that. I, I can't be making those mistakes. I know that sometimes I'm in a hurry and I eyesight's not the best, you know. But I, I appreciate that. I pre- and I appreciate that. All right. You know who else I appreciate? Our guest today, which is Steve Spurrier, as it always is on Monday, Mon- Meldon Mondays. We'll have him on, and of course we'll have Robbie Andrew on for Yes, No, Way, or Maybe. 
right after we take this break here on another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Process Service of Gainesville offers a rapid turnaround on affidavits of service for Gator lawyers locally and nationwide. Our friend Scott Hart offers immediate responses on status requests and is a member of NAPS and FAPS. And he has been a part of the community for almost two decades. Need service? Call Process Service of Gainesville at 407 697 9592 or email shartgators, that's G A T R, at yahoo.com. And make sure you ask about the paralegal legal secretary bonus program. Hello there, everybody. I'm Pat Dula, of course, from another Duly Noted podcast. This is a great Adam Brewer, and he's just opened up a place here, Adam Brewer to go. Uh, what would give you the idea to do this, to have a to-go place? Uh, we really like the fast concept, you know, being able to get the barbecue. Uh, now we have this new online ordering. So we before it was a call ahead, carry out, quick service. Um, we have like a curbside kind of a deal where, um, you know, you're, you're, everything's ready to go for you. Um, and then we thought, Wow, we have a really great dine-in concept, but uh, how can we make this you know, streamlined for the customer and make it easy and accessible uh, for all parts of town? Adam's Rib Co. to go. Come on down and enjoy it. Great food, great atmosphere, a diverse menu, everything made from scratch, plenty of space, and locally owned. These are all the characteristics of a great restaurant, and you can find each and every one of them right here in Gainesville at Ballyhoo Grill. Ballyhoo Grill prepares all of their food fresh every day from their salad dressing to their award-winning soups. Bring your family and enjoy dinner under the Tim Trebo Tiki Hut while listening to live music. Or if you're running low on time to eat out, they also deliver through Uber Eats, Fight Squad, and Postmates, a Gainesville staple that's been open for over 30 years check out ballyhoo grill on facebook or at ballyhoogrill.com okay welcome back to another duly noted podcast mm-hmm. presented by titan mri from the meldon law gator studios and meldon law also sponsors coach spurrier's appearances we love having him on here and uh of course big honor you got this week in the walter <laughs> camp uh was a citizenship or distinguished award? american distinguished american distinguished yeah. american and it was pretty neat uh, because it wasn't uh necessarily a football coach it won a right. bunch of championships or games or whatever it was about any uh person in his particular field or his prof- or her profession that has achieved excellence and is a little bit better than the crowd right. as they right. say so it was it was a nice honor and uh, they had the All-American team, Walter Camp, uh, College All-Americans, uh, Coach of the Year, uh, Jalen DeBoer was up there, new Alabama coach. And I think he's already set an Alabama record. He flew up commercially. <laughs> Instead really? of the, their <laughs> private jet was in use, and uh, he went up commercially and, and back. So anyway, uh, but it was, a, it was a neat experience, really was. Really glad that my wife, Jerry, and I had a chance to go yeah. up there and spend a couple of nights and, and meet those people in New Haven, Connecticut. Was it chilly up there? I or? was in the Ivy League. No, <laughs> it was uh, 60 or yeah. so. It wasn't bad at all. But uh, I was right there at Yale University. That's where the uh, dinner took place. And, the, and they won the uh, their tournament this weekend. Sunday. Yale yeah, won, they won the so Ivy got, League uh, yeah, champs. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty On a neat. buzzer beater, too. Yeah. yeah. But uh, anyway, so it was a neat experience. And uh, the airplanes were... Up and back quickly. I tell you, getting in and out of Gainesville, it's convenient. Really it is. is. Oh, Straight to Atlanta yeah. and, and then on up and so forth. So uh, everything worked out smoothly. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of flying out of uh, Orlando, and which you have oh, to do no. a lot because of the prices, but mm-hmm. uh, flying out of Gainesville is, is the best. Mm-hmm. I, it, <laughs> Jacksonville's not too bad either, actually. Um, Correct. Mm-hmm. But um, So that was a pretty cool award, and, and certainly uh, – mm-hmm. We saw a bunch of other awards go out this weekend for MVPs of tournaments and everything. I'm oh. wondering, do you fill out a bracket? Are you into that, uh, the bracket, <clears throat> and picking a winner, or do you care? No, I've never really got into that too much. I let my buddy Ricky Newhouse do all that stuff. <laughs> i tell you what, that was a shame. Rick uh, was University of Washington yeah. and did a bracket thing with his buddies. And I think they all put a 1000 bucks in or yeah. something. And he won it, and... Uh, and he's sort of, sort of bragging about it. He won the big pot. And university said, well, you can't be gambling. That's against yeah. the rules for coaches back then. Yeah. And now it's legal as can be. And everybody in the world can gamble. 
Uh, but I think he sort of got fired for that. Yeah, at, at and University of Washington. If you remember back in the <clears throat> Arnsbarger days, mm -hmm. he they had a a, um, a fantasy league, football league, mm -hmm. and they said it was just for pizza and everything. And but at the same time that Shane and Brady got. Mm -hmm. busted for gambling yeah. it was it was mm -hmm. weird during that time mm -hmm. of the year you walked mm -hmm. into kind of a mess that way but uh well there was four or five guys that <clears throat> had to miss some time i think because they participated they in some yep. kind of gambling little thing uh but shane was uh, able to go through spring practice yep. and of course win the job yep. and away we went yep absolutely well <clears throat> obviously you watched mm -hmm. a lot of basketball this mm -hmm. weekend like we all did and certainly uh mm -hmm. what would happen sunday was uh, a downer uh, seeing Micah Hanlocked and go down like that, and I mean, my my assumption is it was bone through the leg because there was blood on the floor, and it, that doesn't happen when you sprain something. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't. I mean, he's had surgery. <coughs> Ed um, is uh, he's already had surgery probably yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it mm -hmm. was just heartbreaking to see. And mm -hmm. the weird thing is, it was just so quiet in the arena. I mean, mm -hmm. it was like a hush. People were scared. It reminded me of when our player at FSU. Keontae, yeah. I the, thought the uh, same stroke, thing. Yeah. Had a heart attack and stroke and so forth. And uh, and actually, I was <laughs> flying on an airplane when this was happening. And I, but we heard it happen, but they never would show the replay. Oh. I was waiting to see, well, how did, you know, how did it happen? How did it happen? And they, they, they wouldn't show it. Well, I, yeah. I, uh, I saw Patrick Young tweeted this out. He said, you know, he just landed. And he landed like he always lands, but for some reason, it, just, it was yeah. just one of those weird mm -hmm. things. And you know, it's just like you saw the play with Aaron Rodgers tore his Achilles. Yeah. I didn't Nobody see anything it. happen, you know. I mean, mm -hmm. but sometimes that those things happen. But mm -hmm. it was a great run by Todd Golden in that tournament. They they did some great things mm -hmm. coming back from eighteen uh, against A and M. That was a a hell of a game. That was fun to watch. Yeah, it was a good run uh, we had. Uh, probably the team had the best run overall was NC State. Oh. I five in a row? Five in a row. They, yeah. had, they played five days in a row or nights, whatever. Uh, but that's, I don't know if anybody's ever done that, but maybe they have. Uh, but that is neat to, to play five. I think it was the first row. time it's happened. Yeah, I, I'm be. trying to remember mm -hmm. if it was or not. I know that, that mm -hmm. Nolan Richardson won four in a row at, at uh, mm -hmm. Arkansas. But, yeah, and so, I mean, NC State could say to Florida, oh, you were tired? Uh, we played another game. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, I mean, look, mm -hmm. Florida was obviously weary, but mm -hmm. there was some unbelievable stuff going on this weekend. And, of course, mm -hmm. the tournament selections come out. There were a lot of people mad. So many people boycotting the uh, NIT because they, they're – Ticked yeah. off, you know. I don't know if you like. It's like saying I don't want to go to the Birmingham Bowl, I guess, uh, or, mm -hmm. or or the uh, Peach Bowl, something like that. But oh, Peach Bowl is better now, but it used to be bad. I mean, you would never do that, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no. I, I mean, 64, 68 teams. Yeah, 68. make make the uh, final dance. I don't know if I'd want to play in that NIT, but uh, it used to be sort of, you know, fun. It was hey, a it's big another deal, tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, get, we get to keep playing, uh, get our guys ready for next year. But you don't know who's next year's team exactly. players are going to be on your team. So it's a, it's a turnover everywhere, and I don't know how much longer that NIT will be there. Yeah, I mean, it's almost like mm -hmm. those minor bowl games. And, and Chris mm -hmm. Beard said, is, hey, yeah. look, the portal's opening up. i got to get rid. That's what I care about. Yeah. I don't care about – Playing, you mm -hmm. know, and again, so now they weren't disappointed because they weren't getting in. We mm -hmm. knew they weren't getting in, but um, mm -hmm. certainly uh, Rick Patino's pulled out, Oklahoma's pulled mm -hmm. out. These people are all pulling out, and they said we don't want any part of it. Uh, so you end up with mm -hmm. USF and UCF playing. Well, I wonder how many coaches uh, before the season uh, in football. One of our goals every year was win the bowl game. Yeah, I mean, we figured we we're going to go to it, and if we lost a bunch of close games and we had to go to down the line bowl. Hey, let's try to win it and have a decent off season because life's a little better when you win your right. last game. But I don't know if a basketball coach would ever say, hey, let's win a bunch of games in the NIT if we get to it. Yeah. So uh, it's just a little bit different. Uh, but win a football go bowl game uh, to me is really important. Did you ever, <laughs> ever have a season where you didn't go to a bowl game? Well, we were ineligible the first year here. That's right, yeah. For something that happened yeah, that's right. uh, four yeah. years prior. Yeah, and which wasn't a big deal. Yeah, it's sort of yeah. funny what they, uh, uh, they they said. A graduate assistant drove a player to Palatka because he had to pay some uh, child support payment, Jarvis Williams. Jarvis Williams, yeah. And drove him over and back. And, oh, that's a violation. That's extra benefit Benefits. for a player to actually show some kindness to drive him to Palatka and back. 
So that, that's the reason we didn't play in a bowl game the first year. Yeah. Uh, how, did, how did you ever deal? Did, I mean, mm-hmm. did you ever talk to the NCAA mm-hmm. about any of this stuff? Or well, we talked. I went out when they had the hearing. Yeah. But they don't give you the penalty then. Yeah. And we'd already, we were like 4 and 0, 5 and 0 when the penalty came in. So, you know, we had a big meeting about can we appeal it to next year? If, if we'd had Donald Trump on our committee, he'd said appeal, appeal, appeal. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll, we'll take it next year. And, or then, then we'll take it the next year or something like that. I don't know. But uh, everybody just wanted to get it over with. And of course, our committee of president and uh, uh, athletic director and uh, all the other people uh, on the board there, they didn't know we were going to win the SEC. So, anyway, we won it anyway, and we're going to win it anyway. That's and, the thing. Uh, if you had moved it back to the next year, your next year is even won better. It also. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. But I mean, that team, a 91 team, is remembered as one of the best ever at Florida. So, um, but the mm-hmm. 90 team is too. You know, I, I think there's a lot of Gator fans that really love that team. Yeah, 90 team was really good. We had one lousy game, but other than that, yeah. uh, uh, we we had some big, big games uh, and so forth. So, uh, yeah, the 90 team, I always say, paved the way for the 91 and all the rest of the teams because now we we know we can win SECs. Hey, the 90 team did it. We can do it, and away we went, uh, winning six in the first seven years. Right, exactly. <laughs> Pretty neat, yeah. Um, yeah. I did want to ask you about the golf uh, <clears throat> over – well, two golfs. First, the Gator golf team won again. They they had another winning tournament. Uh, okay. They're really playing well. In fact, I'm doing a big piece on Dudley Hart for mm-hmm. the alumni magazine. Uh, mm-hmm. So great to have him back. He's a good dude. Uh, but then uh, mm-hmm. Scotty Scheffler winning back-to-back players. Nobody's ever done it. Yeah, Scotty is, uh, well, he's the best player in the world. Yeah. No question about it. But still, he had uh, you know he had to make some putts and do some good stuff, and then the other guys had to miss some putts. They did <laughs> uh, to beat beat two guys by one shot uh, over uh, seventy two holes. Uh, you know, golf gods have got a smile on you, and and Scotty, uh, he, he it was his day to win. But he is the best player in the world, as yeah, they, they he, all mentioned. Well, I I mean, you've played there a few times, mm-hmm. right? At, yeah. at Sawgrass, I played a lot when I was in Jacksonville, but. Um, that fourth hole is, is brutal. I mean, you stand up on the tee and you go, where do I hit it? And for him to hole out on that hole for a two. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did. That was uh, – That was, that, that kind of got it, it jump-started. He's already had six hole-outs this year, they said. <laughs> from I guess maybe from off the green is going to hole out. But. Apparently he has <clears> a bet <throat> with one of the announcers – or Ken, I think it's <clears throat> uh, the guy from Georgia um, mm-hmm. that if he gets to seven, he's got to pay him like mm-hmm. 100 bucks or something, so – that's a good bet to have. Although betting is illegal, right? <laughs> um, mm-hmm. All right. So also the women are live to see another day. They got an NIT game Thursday, so okay. um, we'll see them against St. John's. Um, mm-hmm. And of good. course, baseball had a, a they they got to mm-hmm. figure out how to win on Saturdays. Every weekend series, the last three weeks, went on Friday, mm-hmm. went on Sunday, went, Saturday was on Saturday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so we got a, and we got a lot of other stuff going on. I know you're excited about just sitting and watching all the basketball, and mm-hmm. we all we all have the same uh, thing in, in life, and that we have mm-hmm. to figure out what channel's true TV because nobody ever watches it mm-hmm. except during the tournament. You mm-hmm. have to watch it during the tournament. In fact, the the um, mm-hmm. two uh, playing games are are both all on two uh, on true TV. Mm-hmm. So. Did you hear about the uh, the game? I'm not sure what it was, but uh, Ricky Newhouse on his guy Childers was talking about it on the radio as I was driving over this morning. They were ahead by one point, and the player thought they were still behind, yes. and he intentionally exactly. fouled the other yes. team with about four or five seconds left. Yeah, and the other, and the kid made both free throws. And yeah, I'm trying to think who was. I mean, I've watched was so it much Dayton basketball. Or it, I'm not sure who it was. I know Dayton. Oh in man, the that was. Uh, yeah, you got to keep up that with the score. Is. That yeah. was brutal. Yeah, yeah. He didn't know what the score was. He didn't know what the score was. Yeah. And you had another game where confetti fell with like three minutes left in the first half, <laughs> and yeah. they had to clean the yeah. whole court. Yeah. <laughs> that it was a that wild, game. wild mm-hmm. weekend. Uh, that was Kent State versus Akron. Akron, Kent State, yes, Akron. that's right. And mm-hmm. they, they were just devastated. Mm-hmm. And of course, you were talking about Yale won on a buzzer beater, and their coach was said, "I'm just, I'm heartbroken. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It's." Hey, it's tough, and you know, at the end of the day, there's only gonna be one team that can hold up the the trophy. Hold, hold and, it and mm-hmm. There's gonna be 67 teams that are disappointed. Um, 
Yeah, let me tell you what was interesting. I, I was watching uh, the experts, Billis and all the guys, you know, yeah, that do yeah. it. All three of them picked UConn to win it all. They did. did you see that last I night? I know. I, I said, thought it was. Yeah, man, that's. I, I know UConn's good, and I know they're the favorite, but you'd think one of them would say maybe just Tennessee the, or just for the hell of somebody. It. Yeah. yeah, maybe. I think Tennessee may make a run. Auburn could make a run the way they're they playing. Could. They played, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they played elite level defense all, all week, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, you're right about Tennessee. I don't know, and they just laid a total egg in the mm -hmm. tournament. They could, Kentucky could be there. Yeah. I don't know. I, I would, yeah. I haven't filled my bracket out yet. I only do one. If you do more than one, then I don't want to hear about your other bracket. Mm -hmm. um, but mm -hmm. I'm trying to figure. I, I'm going to pick some upsets. I can promise you oh, that. Oh yeah, you got to pick a few. And the one everybody's going to pick is New Mexico. Because they're underseeded, and um, they're playing uh, Clemson, who's overseeded, Ooh. and then you know what happen? Clemson will beat them, and then you go. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. But uh, you never know how it goes. But uh, all right, coach. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, I know gymnastics this weekend too. <laughs> SEC mm -hmm. championships are up in. I guess mm -hmm. they're in New Orleans this year. Yeah, different and, place. Uh, they're usually up in. Yeah, the, the yeah. Our gymnastic ladies are ready. I think yep. to really make a strong run. Uh, I think Oklahoma. Women have won two in a row yep. national championships, but uh, we got to get there first, uh, one meet at a time. And I'm sure Jenny Rowland will have her team well prepared. Uh, she's she's one of the best coaches on campus, and uh, and spring football is coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean that, that's right the now. thing. I, it, mm -hmm. It's almost got dwarfed by the basketball run. It you know, has. Where nobody's mm -hmm. even paying attention to it, and all the writers mm -hmm. are up there. So that's true. Uh, but hey, I don't. I, don't think Billy Napier cares whether anybody's out there covering them, you know, right now. But uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, everything I hear is positive yeah. out of there. You know, they the, these guys that they mm -hmm. brought in, Lagway and Miles Graham, mm -hmm. and we're gonna have Ernest Graham on next week on the show. Good, one of your favorite mm -hmm. players, I know that uh, at Florida. Yeah, we got we got a lot of new guys. Most all teams have a lot yeah. of new guys every year. So hopefully we can get some like senior leadership more yeah. than just Graham Mertz, who I think is an excellent leader also. Uh, but, you know, some linemen on both sides of the ball and some DBs and, you know, encourage everyone. I, th I thought that was one thing we didn't quite have the last few years is senior leaders. Right. It, well, they didn't have hardly any seniors. Yeah. Yeah. I think they mm -hmm. had no seniors in the entire starting defense last year. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that's, mm -hmm. that was part of the problem was uh, I, I mm -hmm. agree with you. Senior leadership is important. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, anything else, Coach? I think that's about it. Basketball is here, and the other sports are. Softball is also a good start. Yeah, they're softball doing really well. Doing fine. And, uh, spring football. So anyway, yeah. Is it always something? Go I tell you what, this is a time of year where there is you. Don't tell me there's nothing to do in this town. I know lacrosse has a home game this week. There's everything going mm -hmm. on, and uh, mm -hmm. we always appreciate Coach Spurrier being on. And we'll be back with more of another Duly Noted podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios right after this break. I was driving behind a lady and very suddenly she moved out of the way. There was a log laying in the road. And when I hit my brakes, I went on top of the log. I had two herniated discs. I just haven't been the same since. Jeffrey Meldon fought for me all the way. Him and his team really went there for me. Throughout the whole lawsuit, he made sure that my bills was paid. It was never no whenever I called him and asked him for something. Call Melvin Law right now. Things have certainly got a little out of hand lately when it comes to just buying our everyday necessities. Just look at gas, streaming services, and heck, even chicken wings. Well, there is one necessity that shouldn't cost a ton. Taking care of yourself and helping fix all the aches and pains in life. And the fine folks at Titan MRI agree. With costs a fraction of what you'd pay at a hospital, you'll not only save money, you'll be taken care of by staff with over 20 years experience. So when you need an MRI, call Titan first, and you can go where your doctors send their families. Now offering CAT scans. Another duly noted podcast comes to you from the Coach's Podcast Room at Spurrier's Gridiron Grill and Celebration Point. You can watch and listen to us on Facebook and YouTube for every podcast that we do on Mondays and Fridays at 2 o'clock. Listen to the podcast whenever on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, any of the other 39 platforms where you can find this podcast or your favorite podcast. Remember to like, follow, and subscribe if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments section below or call me if you want to do some advertising at 352-317-3444.
Okay, welcome back to another Duly Noted Podcast presented by Titan MRI from the Meldon Law Gator Studios. Always a great pleasure on Mondays to bring in our great friend Robbie Andrew on the Big Mills Cheesesteak Zoom line. And of course, he is going to play Yes, Nowhere, Maybe with me. Uh, brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak Street Dining Done the Right Way. Go in there and tell them you listen to the podcast, Free Fries with Your Order. Robbie, what a weekend it was. It was weird in a lot of ways. And that uh, all the stuff that was going on, you didn't know where to look. And uh, and it was just kind of crazy the whole weekend. Yeah. I mean, mainly the whole thing was watching Gator basketball, Pat, which that was highly entertaining. Disappointing finish yesterday. And the guy got hurt and all. But yeah, they made a great run. And I think they're going to be fired up to play in the tournament now. So I know Gator fans are excited. Yeah, it'll be interesting. In fact, I, I was telling my wife, I go, look, the selection show's on at 6. If they go to a playoff in the at the players, I'm not going to be able to watch it because we were out there cooking burgers and we only had one TV out there. I had to get back to my two-TV system. I think I need yeah. three TVs in there now. Pat Clark's putt looked so in that I thought yeah. we're, we're going to the playoff. I thought, And he thought it was in. I think everybody thought it was in. But what about Scheffler, man? He was unbelievable yesterday. He was, uh, absolutely. In fact, he he is one of the questions on Yes, Nowhere, Maybe. Let's play it with Robbie Andrew right now. Yes, Nowhere, Maybe brought to you by Big Mills Cheesesteak. Number one, Robbie, Florida goes one and one this weekend. Uh, I'm going to say maybe, Pat. I, I do I think they're going to win their first game, win the second, I'm not sure. But, you know, I think they're a, a team that's good enough to – to reach the 16, so I, I think they at least go one and one. I think they're going to win their first game. I, I'm going to say that. Whether yeah. they win their second, I think that's a maybe. Yeah, a lot of people are um, kind of high on Florida in a lot of ways. I, I saw a betting site uh, that was high on Florida uh, because I, I don't think they think Marquette should have been seated that high, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and, again, we'll enjoy watching it. And, look, no matter what, I will say this, Robbie, and I think you agree with me. No matter what happens, this has been a great year for Gator basketball. It's been unbelievable. Pat, Florida basketball is relevant again under, under Todd Gold, and, and I was glad to see he got that extension. I think he's excited about the future, and I think Florida fans are too. And if you had told everybody before the year they're going to go 24 and 11, make their tournament final in the SEC, and make it to the big dance, people would have been ecstatic. So I yeah. think they are now too because it's been great. How much what money did much that? How much I'm sorry, money? Pat. No, I was going to say, how much money did SEC coaches make because Ohio State had an opening for a while? Because who got an <laughs> extension? Lamont Paris, Todd Golden. There was another SEC coach that got an extension. Uh, I can't remember who it was. but And there, and then finally Ohio, Ohio State said, ah, let's just make this guy the regular head coach. We can't get anybody to come here. Because everybody's getting extended, you're right. Yeah, exactly. All right, number two on Yes, Nowhere, Maybe, Robbie. Scotty Scheffler, we talked about this, wins the Masters. He's He may be on one of those roles again. Um, I'm tempted to say yes, Pat, because look at when he is, like when he got healthy on Sunday after be, dealing with that neck, he was unstoppable yesterday. He was the old Scheffler hitting the ball stiff and making his putts. If he putts like he did this weekend, I think he will win the Masters because, you know, the, the premiums on putting there. It's all about the green. Yeah, it's all about the green. I think if he puts like he is right now, I think his ball striking is unbelievable. So, yeah, I'm going I'm to say he's my favorite to win the Masters. I'm going to pick him right now. I picked him to win the P TPC on this show, actually. Uh, yeah. I don't know why, but I did. Hey, uh, you played uh, the players, right? You played TPC, right, Sawgrass? No, no, but I've walked that course many times covering it. Yeah. Pat. Well, to me, the fourth hole is one of, the mis one of those holes that look short but it's so hard and because you've got to hit it down this sliver of a fairway. And then you, it, it, I, and guys are going in the water, guys are going over, guys are making bogeys. And for Scheffler to hold it out there, that that was the whole tournament to me, that hole. That one got one. him cranked up. Yeah, and two, and right. I, that got him cranked up. Yeah. But that was a great shot. And that did get him going. And I love that hole too, Pat, because if yeah. you hit the fairway, it's a birdie hole. If you don't, it's a bogey hole. You're so dead. that, that to me – that to me epitomizes that course that it is a mentally taxing every shot. It's like you're under the mental strain the whole way through your right. round. 
Exactly. And, and there's so many knobs and hills and, you, you know, you, you, you I, oh, yeah. look, I, I don't even know if I've ever parred number four. I mean, I've parred yeah. number 17, like I probably played it 30 times. I probably parred it 20 times. Yeah. Um, but it's and then Pat, after you go play four, then to me number five is a real oh, brutal. I've always thought that was the hardest hole in the course. Brutal. And then you get to six. If you hit it left, you're in the trap and you're done. And if you <laughs> if you hit it right, you're in the trees like Brian Harmon did, and he's done. So uh, it's. I tell you what, it's not a long course, but it's a hard course. Now they shot twenty under, but it's still a hard course. It is, especially for me. All right, yeah, finally, I'm sure. People- <laughs> Finally on Yes, Nowhere, Maybe with Robbie Andrew, brought to you by Big Mills Cheese Steak. Robbie, the Vikings pick right now, 11th and 23rd. Do they draft a quarterback, or are you happy with Sam Darnold? Uh, Pat, if they don't if they don't draft up or trade up to get higher, they're not going to draft a quarterback at 11 because there's not going to be any good left there. So either they trade try to make a trade up to get in the top four to get a quarterback, or they just try to get through a year with Sam Darnold and – which probably ain't going to be very good, but, you know, it's just where they are. If they don't trade up, there's no way they're taking a quarterback with the 11th pick. There's nobody that good that late. They could have gotten Justin Fields probably, but I guess Justin Fields apparently turned down four trades. He didn't want to go. He didn't want to go. I don't know if if the Vikings were one. I don't know if it was or not. So is he going to be the backup to the Steelers, Pat? Is that what they signed him for? Well, he's going there as a backup, but Russell Wilson – stinks guess what he'll be in the game russell wilson sprains it what if russell wilson i don't want to wish this on him tears his achilles in the third play of the game now all of a sudden yeah you're right one play Uh, away you never know you never know robbie we always enjoy you being on yes nowhere maybe and uh wednesday listen for robbie on the tailgate uh jeff will be out and and robbie and i'll be doing the tailgate on wednesday and we'll talk a lot of NCAA basketball. Robbie, thanks so yeah, much I look for joining forward to it, Pat. I look forward to it. I'll see you on Wednesday. All right, it is time, and I appreciate Robbie Andrew for being on. Always love having him on. Of course, Coach Spurrier. Let's get to our and a guy I really appreciate. In fact, I uh, was talking to him over the weekend. Uh, we'll go to our Adams Ribco to go Gator of the weekend. And uh, there's a lot to choose from this time of year, as we all know that. But you know who I went with? I went with Denzel Aberdeen. I – did not see this coming. I, 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 Chris Harry was writing about how uh, the coaches have seen this in him for a while. I have noticed this guy is getting better as the year go as the year is going on. And all of a sudden, when he goes in the game, you're not grimacing and waiting for Zion or or Clayton to get back out there. Uh, but to score 20 points in a game where you're down 18, he saved them in the first half of that game. If he's not hot, I don't know what would have happened. Um, Again, if you want to believe in Karen's theory, he shouldn't have made all his shots. But uh, he really did save them, and I, I made him uh, our Adam Dribko to go Gator of the Weekend. So congratulations, Denzel. And, of course, we'll play a big role in the NCAA tournament for Florida going forward. Uh, I don't know. Look, the bottom line is I know that this – I talked about the Kugel thing, but they've got four guards. They're fine. they got Pullen. you got Clayton. you got – Richard, you got uh, Aberdeen. Uh, if, if the fifth guy's not going to play hard and not going to work hard in practice and mope around, sit him down. Don't take him. Maybe they'll have another come to Jesus meeting. We'll see. All right, that is our Adams Ripco to go Gator of the weekend. Let's get to our Leonardo's at Millhopper quick picks. You only you have very little time to make this pick because it is being played Wednesday night. Well, you got plenty of time, right, to make this pick. And a lot of you – did extend your time to pick the uh, SEC tournament winner until right, you know, after you knew who was in the uh, semifinals. Uh, but uh, several people picked Auburn. A lot of people picked Florida. So um, we had several qualifiers. But we're going to give you this one. The, the team that will play Florida, Boise State, Colorado. They're playing. It's a nine. I'll, I'll get to the time of it but it, it's wednesday night that's all you need to know by wednesday at seven o'clock you need to have your pick if you don't have it in by then you're done done um that is of course a playing game up in dayton ohio i have been to dayton ohio it wasn't playing games then i think it was fsu was playing in a 
uh, in the NCAA tournament. I was covering FSU at the time, so I've been there. Um, but anyway, that's it. Boise State at Colorado, or not at Colorado, Boise State versus Colorado. And as I said earlier, Boise State's never won an NCAA game. Colorado's never been to the Sweet 16. You know, we'll see. I'd pick, I, I, I'd pick Colorado. That's who I'd pick. But I, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. Uh, all right, let's go to our Hesser and Kipke three things. And, of course, Hesser and Kipke is a Gainesville law firm specializing in the areas of family law and workers' compensation. If you're a loyal listener of this show, you know who we are by now. If not, Google the firm, check out the reviews, and hear what our clients have to say. Ken and Jennifer can be reached at 24-7 via call or text at 352 339 9920 Hesser and Kipke, and they just got in for a big sponsorship for the Bob Dooley as well. So, uh, really, really happy with that. Really happy with everything that's going on right now, to be honest with you. Um, all right, let's go. Let's start with number one on three things, and that is this Justin Fields thing. You know, I talked about this last week where. You, you get all these CBS notifications, and half of them are, well, be sure to watch this game. But then all of a sudden you look at it and you go, what? Justin Fields got traded to Pittsburgh? They just got a quarterback. What's going on there? Um, but apparently he turned down four trade possibilities, and it's all they could get, I guess. I don't know. Um, but it's interesting. And, and anybody who doesn't think that Justin Fields could be the quarterback at Pittsburgh eventually is crazy. Uh, Russell well, he, Wilson's done nothing. He actually has higher odds to win the MVP. He does? Yeah, Justin Fields does. Justin Fields has higher odds than Russell Wilson. And Russell Wilson. What? Oh. I don't think either one's going to happen. Yeah, I will either, say that. But, yeah. but I will say this. They have had a sneaky good offseason, and, and certainly their quarterback rooms is pretty good. I you know. It could not be a better improvement over last year. Yes, time. from what it was. And Kenny Pickett, of course, said, I don't want to be here. And everybody's going, well, we don't want you either. <laughs> um, yeah. uh, he, and he he was good in college. Some guys are really good in college. But it's amazing how much quarterback movement there's been and how few really great quarterbacks there are. Mm-hmm. Few great NFL quarterbacks. There's, not, there's probably 10 really, really good NFL quarterbacks. I don't know if you can go past 10. I would almost say only like four Well, I mean, you know, you go Mahomes, Allen, yeah. the, the obvious ones. I mean, I, I guess you stick Aaron Rodgers in there. He's if, unless he's guys. unless he ends up being vice president, you know. Oh God, <laughs> I never get into that. Uh, yeah, we don't want to get into politics. <laughs> all right, let's get to number two, and that is all these coaches in the NIT are mad. They don't want to go. That includes Rick Pitino, who said St. John, the St. John's not going. Why are we worried about the net rankings anymore? And I totally agree with him on that. I need to stop looking at that. In fact, I am going to delete it from my bookmarks, the net ranking. I don't want to know what their net rankings are anymore because they obviously don't mean anything. The Ken Palm don't mean anything. What are the metrics they're using? And uh, St. John should have gotten in. Oklahoma should have gotten in. Um, Indiana State, I can make an argument against them. They played. They won one quad one game. We talked all year about Florida needs a quad one win. They had one. Now, they didn't schedule well in the in the non-con, and this is a, another lesson for everybody. You need to schedule better in the non-conference part of the season. Uh, Oklahoma, Pittsburgh, uh, St. John's, Ole Miss, and there's, I think there's a fifth team that told the NIT no. So, man, I cannot wait to watch the NIT. That is going to be awesome. Uh, let's get to number three, and that is the Florida women are in the NIT. The, I think it's the NIT. They're calling it the Women's Basketball Invitational Tournament. So I assume that's the Women's NIT. They they changed the wording. I guess it is. I don't even know, to be honest with you. But they do play. They play Thursday night. Uh, they're playing St. John's. So maybe Rick Pitino can come down and watch that game because he doesn't have anything to do. Um, but they're playing Thursday, so – Good for them. They, look, they were a team that just didn't have the size, and they would be in games, and they couldn't finish. Um, but I'm just glad they get to keep playing. And I, that's what I would want to do. What would you rather do as a basketball player? And I'm talking about the men and the women. Go home or, or go to class and or go to a tournament where you could play again, play another game, have people cheering for you. 
get free food, you know, all the stuff, all the swag that comes with it. I'm not saying the swag, there's a lot of swag in the NIT, okay? But I'd still rather be playing. And I, I don't get these coaches who have done this. I really don't. I, I, I don't agree with it. All right, that is our Hesser and Kipke three things. Let's uh, wrap it up with our Swamp Games of the Weekend. I'm sure a lot of you were at the Swamp. I know many people that were at the Swamp this weekend. Um, and I did talk to uh, our buddy Kyle, and they will be sponsoring the Margarita Hole again this year. Excited about that. Um, they're always great. And, of course, uh, the Swamp has all kinds of specials for you as well uh, to, if you want to go over there and watch basketball. Look, I think that would be a good place to set up for the NCAA tournament. because I mean, it comes on like at noon and it ends at midnight. Uh your bill might get a little bit high if you if you kept eating and drinking the whole time, but at least go for a portion, uh, and we appreciate them. Uh, let's let's give you the schedule Tuesday. These are the play-in games, okay? And I know they want to call it first four. It's the play-in games. That's what they are. Wagner is playing Howard at six forty on Tuesday. I usually watch the first game because I'm excited about the tournament. I have no reason. I got somebody's going to have to give me a stat. You know, like, like I want Indiana State to be in this tournament because they've got a player, this big, huge guy with, who wears these big horn rim glasses, and is and they what they have all these nicknames for him. One of them was Larry Nerd. So, um, what was the other one? Oh, uh, God, I can't think of it now. They were they were, they were hilarious. Uh, but anyway, Wagner and Howard are playing. I'm not asking you to watch that. Uh, but at 9:10, Colorado State, Virginia. Interested in that? Uh, Virginia, we saw, of course, Florida. I watched a lot of Virginia games this year. Um, don't know much about Colorado State. Wednesday, it is, of course, uh, the first game is Grambling against Montana State. Grambling, who Florida destroyed, and when they won their tournament, I go, well, that's got to be a little boost for Florida. Don't look at the net anymore. The net is done. It's finished. We're going we're gonna to kill the net. It's like that movie, The Net. You ever see that movie, The Net? I think Sandra Bullock was in it. Yeah, it's not that good. You didn't miss anything. And then, of course, Colorado-Boise State is the last game, 9-10, and that is a game where Florida, Florida will play that team. And that's where Florida does get a little bit of a break. Uh, that team's going to play a late game and then have to travel and then get a practice in and then play the game uh, at 4.30. So it's it's that part I think is – I don't think many people are going to pick against Florida in the uh, first round, uh, but I think a lot of them are going to pick against Florida in the second round. Also, Tuesday – and I look, I'm not asking you to watch this again. Xavier is playing Georgia in the NIT. Will I watch it? You're damn right I will. I'll probably watch that before I watch Wagner and Howard just to watch Mike White maybe lose another game. Um, and then Tuesday, Florida's playing JU in baseball. That's a 6.30 start, and it's on the plus. So, um, of course, the Gators go out to LSU. We'll give you all those on the uh, Tuesday show, all the stuff that's going on this weekend. Uh, but that'll do it. And uh, appreciate Zach for doing a great job handling me. It's hard. It's not easy with me. Phone calls are coming in every day. Zach, we got to stop. I got to get a phone call. Um, but we'll be back with the, the show again. We're, we're going to be on tomorrow. It's going to be posted tomorrow at some point. And it'll be hopefully, if we everything works out, Mark Wise and Matt McCall uh, breaking down the NCAA tournament will be most of it. We'll, we'll do the usual things. We'll do our starting five and we'll do our. Um, Hesser and Kipke and all that, and Adam Drip. We'll do all that, but mostly we're going to talk about basketball. That's really going to be the extent of the, tomorrow's show. Not the extent, the focus. That's a better word. All right, until next time. Until then, till tomorrow morning. <laughs> it's going to be, it could be really early. We're still waiting on the word, but we'll get it done. Until then, I am Pat Dooley. I am deep, I am way back, and I am out of here.